everybody. Welcome back to the world of me. My name's Cougar, and this is another episode from the Amazon review series uh, where, we got, where we've got another package in and, uh, well, a little difficult to show. I only have so much room, but as you can see here, this is a mill. Uh, now the mill to make flour. Uh, so you can take, of course, if you grow your own grains or something like that for some people they uh, have a have a, a garden that they grow corn in for example you can actually uh, basically grind down and make your own cornmeal essentially or whatever else you want to use it for i have something that i'm going to use here shortly let's go ahead and see what's inside the box all right everybody so here we go we've got well a good handful of pieces overall uh, obviously the main millet itself uh, we've got the warranty card Obviously, they got the QR code, makes it a little easier maybe to activate your warranty, the instruction manual, and then lots of little parts here. We have uh, little caps and stuff. We've got some screws and uh, various blades and whatnot, um, as well as some of the nuts. Uh, this here is actually something for the motor. Uh, for those of you who know a little bit about motors, this is a brushed motor. Uh, it is not brushless. And that's what these are, are the brushes for the motor. Uh, and then we actually have two sets of those. So that's really nice because uh, that means we can use this for a good long while. Uh, and those brushes, of course, can wear out and we have spares to use. And then we also have a, uh, they actually gave us a wrench, as you can see, a T-wrench. And this, I'm sure, is for these nuts right here. Yep. So there we go. So anyhow, obviously, um, for those of you who don't know a whole lot about these, uh, it's a mill, just like, for example, the old-fashioned days where they used a, uh, the big stone wheel and ground everything up using things like a waterfall or donkeys walking in a circle or something like that. And this is going to sit there and grind it up a lot more efficiently than, say, like a mortal and pe mortar and pestle. Uh, that of course will take a very long time. This will be a lot more efficient and it's going to save your hands and arms. Uh, now, if you can see right here, this is the model 750. So this is the one that's on a slightly smaller side for, uh, for these guys. As I said, it is a mill grinder. I said, making, uh, things like cornmeal and flour, you can of course grind up other things. You can grind up herbs and things like that. So you can make teas, uh, and tinctures and stuff like that with it if you want. You can go ahead and also you can use this to grind coffee, which I know a lot of people uh, have coffee grinders and whatnot. Uh, the advantage to this is it's not just for one specific thing and only has one setting. Um, this should have multiple settings on how coarse or how finely ground uh, the things that you put in here are. Now, uh, this is uh, all uh, stainless steel, so it is uh, basically like, I guess you consider it like hy hypoallergenic kind of thing. Um, Stainless steel is good to uh, uh, keep away like bacteria and things like that. Of course, being stainless steel does not mean it won't rust, so you do still have to take care of it. Uh, good idea to get uh, some food grade lubricants. Um, you can, of course, find those on Amazon, I'm sure. Uh, as well, sometimes you can use your standard oils like things like uh, flaxseed oil or something uh, similar, grapeseed oil. Things like that can be used in different capacities other than just oils to add to food as well. Uh, now we have a handful of information, of course, in the book. It uh, shows you uh, how things are kind of put together on the inside there. It, uh, of course, is going to tell us how to actually operate the machine itself, um, where to put all these things, of course. Oh, and something else I, I missed. We do have a little brush here. I'm sure that's to clean out maybe some of the leftover food dust um, or, you know, grounds or uh, flowers, whatever it is that we make. That's probably what this is for. Uh, and then uh, our little caps here. Well, we'll figure out what that's for as we put everything together. Now, this obviously does work on a standard 110 line. And uh, you just plug that one in. You have a variable selector here that will change. Uh, I'm, I'm sure this is going to be, it's going to either be speeds or times uh, for that. We'll find out here in just a second when I read the manual. Uh, we do have actually a reset button on the back here. So 
it is uh, basically it's fused, meaning that um, you know you can pop the circuit on it and it's going to protect the motor and keep it from blowing out if there happens to be a, uh, a power surge or something of that nature. All right, now let's see to open it up. We're going to go ahead and pull these down and then rotate around. There we go. And there's the inside of the lid. It's just a simple lockdown clamping system. So you pull it across like that and it pulls the, pulls the, uh, basically the nut up and tightens it down onto the top. You can unscrew and screw it as you need to for however tight you need it to be. It does have a gasket here on the inside, uh, so that helps to seal it. Make sure that you don't get dust and everything flying out of it while it's working. Uh, we have a few other pieces that are inside here. Here you can see there is a very fine mesh uh, sieve, and this again, stainless steel, so it's going to be resistant to, of course, uh, collecting things like bacteria and things like that. Uh, and then on the inside, you can see we have the blades, the nuts are there on the top. Uh, so these are all probably going to be extra. Those, of course, are going to go around and depending on your setting, uh, faster, slower, uh, more compressed in some way, shape or form so that they produce a uh, a finer or a more coarse type of grind. So of course, with the blades being in there, depending on how long you grind it, uh, uh, I just kind of glanced at the instructions. And this is of course a timer. It doesn't adjust it. Well, the timer does actually adjust in a sense. The more you grind it, the finer the grind is going to be. So the more it's going to become flour-like versus coffee ground-like. Coffee grounds, of course, being much more coarse or even uh, something like cornmeal, which is also very coarse. Uh, so the longer you leave it in here, the finer the grind is going to be. Uh, so that's, you know, that's basically, you don't have to adjust um, a whole lot to it. It's literally just time, uh, how long it's going to grind. Uh, some of the others have slightly different versions of this. Obviously, you can see on the thing here. Uh, this one is going to be the one on the left. You can see the one on the right, which has a little bit more to it. Um, I do believe that uh, it uh, can adjust a little bit more and it has some more functionality to it. For those of you who have and want to do smaller batches, maybe, uh, you know, a few cups to, you know, or if you're going by weight, maybe a, a pound or a couple of pounds at a time uh, in a session you've got this one that will do just fine, which is perfect for me. Uh, but anyhow, so what you do is you go ahead, you fill up the inside here. You can, you plug it in, of course, and you turn on your timer. Uh, your timer will then run for however long. And then once you're done, you can take and sieve it out. And if you want uh, really coarse stuff, of course, you don't want to grind it for very long. If you want fine, uh, basically flour type material to come out. So very finely crushed to the point of dust. Uh, then of course you sit there, you sieve it out and uh, whatever's left in here, you can put back in there, let it grind up again. Um, if there's just a little bit, you can do with it as you wish. If you want to use it for something else, uh, that's all, of course up to you. Now, something I have right now is some, uh, rice and this is, uh, Freshly cleaned rice, cleaned and dried. So uh, I took and uh, if you're going to use bagged rice, just as a for instance, guys, uh, you want to take and uh, hopefully you have some type of strainer or sieve uh, that is small enough holes that the rice doesn't go through and you want to wash your rice. You can take it and put it in a bowl and kind of knead it around, uh, stir it however you want to do it. Uh, the water will become cloudy um, and kind of milky colored uh, as you go along. Try to get as much of that out as you can. Dump the water out, fill it up, keep doing that until the water's clean. Now, you can save that, of course, for those of you who are um, bakers and whatnot, which, of course, I'm sure some, many of you will be with this. Uh, the stuff that comes out, uh, you can let it evaporate. That is going to be flour, or that, well, not flour starch, but it's going to be rice starch. And uh, that's similar with other grains as well. You want to, of course, clean them and clean 
some of the starches. Um, of course, white rice that is like this. Um, this has uh, been uh, basically shelled or husked um, where they take the chaff off of it. Um, the chaff being the fibrous material on the outside and then the rice itself basically being the carbohydrate. Um, so for those of you who uh, want to keep that uh, natural fiber in there, just leave it inside. You can still wash it and whatnot. And uh, that way you've got the fiber going into it as well as not as uh, instead of just the carbohydrates. But we'll go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and everything. I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys a little closer so you can see it from the top. And uh, we'll get this started and see what it looks like when it's running for a second. And then here a little bit later on, once it's finished, we'll see what it looks like when we've got rice flour. All right, everybody. So here, give you a little better view as you can see everything right here. We've got our rice. We're going to go ahead and put that in there. And on checking on the, um, the instructions there, the instructions do not um, give you length of time it would take to turn certain things in. It basically tells you to listen. It also says that as you're running this, you run it for three minutes at a time, and then you're supposed to take about a five to ten minute break in between. Um, and that's basically to keep the motor cool. Um, it's also when you're doing something like grinding, that's a lot of friction. And so you're actually going to heat up uh, your material and you don't want to actually burn it because if you do it for too long and too much of a time, since it's staying in this pot, um, it doesn't have anywhere to go and the heat's all going to build up inside there. So you've got two areas that could actually get hot. You can have an overheating of the motor as well as you can have basically a cooking of the material that you're trying to grind up. So uh, you don't want to do that. So like I said, about every uh, three minutes, roughly, they suggest that you, uh, you take and give it a five to ten minute break. So we'll sit here, we'll go through it, uh, maybe check back after the first three minutes and see what it sounds or, or what it looks like. Um, what you need to listen for, it says you will hear it running smoothly, essentially. So you're going to hear it kind of grinding and crushing and everything initially. And then once everything gets to the sound where you're not hearing any more of that and it's just running a smooth, even tone, uh, that, I believe, is when they consider it to be where the flower should be uh, completely finished. So go ahead and latch this down. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and turn this on. Very loud. All right, so there is roughly our first uh, three minutes. And as the thing says right here, it says to de disconnect the power before you open it. So we'll go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. And now the power is disconnected. Now, uh, as I was saying about things getting hot, this is actually really hot. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. And take a look and see what it looks like so far. Ooh, as you can see, the powder. We've got some of it up at the top there. And there's some more down there at the bottom. Uh, now, I do know that this does need a little bit more time to uh, finish. Uh, now, uh, when this starts up, you, you won't really notice... Um, or understand exactly what they mean when they talk about the, the sound for the grinding. Because um, it sounds, initially it sounds kind of even. But after a while, you'll hear it kind of pulsing a little bit. And uh, you'll hear it kind of bog the motor down just a little bit. Uh, and then it breaks loose real quickly after that. And it kind of goes up and down like that. Um, there's less bogging down, uh, where it's not like an even amount of bogging down and loose. Um, so it's not like you, it's just going to go up and down and up and down, um, on an even pattern. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. See, as you can see, we've got a very nice, finely ground kind of flower. Now, as I get down a little deeper, it's doing really nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let it go for maybe another minute or so. Um, 
like I said, though, this is very, very warm. Um, I don't like the actual sides and stuff are hot to the touch where I would actually get a mild burn probably from this. Um, it's going to be well over 100 degrees. So uh, anyhow, that's what we're looking at. Uh, I think uh, I'll finish this up just a little bit, but as you can see, it does work really well. Didn't take that long at all. Um, the timer down there, the numbers uh, correlate to, I think, per minute. So I did turn it up to about the three-minute mark. And uh, it was really close, so I just bumped it a little bit uh, the last maybe 10 or 15 seconds and bumped it off so that we could kind of check it out here. But uh, as you can see, a very nice, finely ground flour. Um, you can, of course, again, like I said, you can use this on a ton of different stuff. Um, obviously, this is rice flour. If you grow your own grains or something like that, you can use it there. Uh, you can also use it, for example, uh, you can also take, put your regular white sugar in here and make powdered sugar with it, and it would be very quick and easy to do. So uh, there you go, guys. Really nice in my, in my thought. I think this is going to be really handy for some of the things uh, that I want to try and do. Uh, with some of the new cooking stuff that I'm trying out. Uh, of course, I've seen, or you guys may have seen some of the previous things. I've gotten various other cooking implements. Uh, and so, as you know, I do like to do a little bit of that, cooking and baking. Uh, if you guys want to check this out, go ahead down there in the description below. Uh, while you're down there, of course, there's going to be the link to this on the Amazon site. As well, there's going to be those links to my social media and the PayPal link there, of which the little QR code probably just popped up. Uh, and you can use the QR code to follow that link, or you can follow the link from the link down below. And of course, while you're down there, or while you're on your way back up, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Really appreciate that. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon if you haven't done so already. Those are going to let you know when I've got new videos coming out here on World of Me. I've got lots of stuff from Amazon Review Series as well as other series. All right, guys. Well, that'll do it for me today. My name's Cougar. This is the World of Me and another episode from the Amazon Review Series. I'd like to wish you all a good day, and I will see you later. Bye.